You interrupted, you're going to wait without interruption and then I will come back to you. So who wants to ask a question, ladies and gentlemen? I won't be waiting, I won't be answering his question until someone else asks. So question, go on, bro. On the topic, bro. Any other questions on the topic? What is Red Dick for the working class, sir? What do you have to say about this guy's question about the church being independent? Right. On the topic, sir. Oh, okay. On the topic I've just been speaking about. I'll do a general Q&A later. Excuse, sir, excuse me for heckling. Okay. I just want to ask you four questions. So, four questions. what I will say is that Muslim trolls like this use this claim about empty churches to try and demoralize you, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to demoralize you. But put your hand up if you go to a full church. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't believe the lies. Shall I tell you what churches are empty? Which ones? The humanist churches. The civil religion churches. The we want to get along with the establishment churches. Those are the ones, ladies and gentlemen, that are empty. Ladies and gentlemen. And let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. If there were as many mosques in this country as churches, the mosques would be empty as well. So, right, any other questions? And try to be on topic. Show that you are listening. You didn't interrupt. Go on. Why did the uh, rioters attack a mosque in South Right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to point out, I'm going to answer like a liberal troll answers the question. So the question is, why did the rioters attack a mosque? Here's how a liberal troll answers those kind of questions when we ask about why were working class girls targeted by Muslim grooming gangs? How do the liberal trolls answer? They answer by saying, well, there are white paedophiles. Why was a church in East London attacked by a Muslim? Why was St. James Sussex Gardens attacked by a Muslim who in court said, I did it because I hate Christians. Why, ladies and gentlemen, were there anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt? And why, ladies and gentlemen, do liberal trolls like this never speak about those issues? Never speak about those issues. No. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be better than the Liberals, okay. I will answer the question. Thank you. The reason why those working class marched on a mosque, and I don't actually deny that they do, okay. is because they were angry, they were frustrated, they, were, they lacked discipline and self-control, and they lacked leadership. Of disciplined people. And it happened because some idiot, some buffoon, who I hope the police capture, spread a lie that the person that killed those children had a Muslim name. That's why they marched on that. But notice, ladies and gentlemen, notice, ladies and gentlemen, that we've never seen this guy go to the Muslims and say, why was St. James Church had all its windows smashed in? Let us see, go and do it now. Let us have you on camera. Let, I, I, bet you, I bet you there's not one video he can show. Not one video. Ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Go on, bro. He interrupts JC. I will never ever answer a question of someone who heckles. Go on, bro. Wow. Yes, it is true. Reform is on the rise. Sorry? Yes, it is true. Reform party is on the rise. Many people are joining. Also, UKIP. 
But why there is a nasty campaign against Nigel Farage and Richard Tais? Right, ladies and gentlemen. Why is there a hate campaign against leading members of reform? Okay. Because they are contradicting the liberal narrative. That's why. Okay. Reform is spotlighting issues that the liberal elites would sooner just ignore, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Like the fact that we are living in a country that no longer has a southern border. Think about that for a second. One of the most powerfulest countries in the world has lost control of its southern border. How is that not a problem, ladies and gentlemen? I want to be clear. Yeah. I have migrants who are my friends. Yeah, we do, we do, we do. I am fully supportive of legal migration, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay. The problem with illegal migration yeah. is you have no idea who is coming through. That's right, that's right. And we now have documented countless examples okay. of migrants coming through who almost within a year are committing crime. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a problem. It is, it is. Ladies and gentlemen. It is. And it needs to be addressed. The liberal elites have lost control of their prison system, where Islamist gangs are running riots and forcibly converting people to Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, where drugs are rampant in the, in the prison system. Prisoners have been abandoned, ladies and gentlemen, by the state. The reason why they hate reform why? is because reform is talking about all the things that the liberal elites don't want you to think about, right. ladies and gentlemen. No problem. Any other questions, Any other question ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yeah, go on, bro. Um, I just want to know whether you're aware of it. Yeah. Why the British government awarded the Muslim community 117 million yeah, to protect the Muslim schools, community centres and mosques. Yeah, and this was back in March. So did the government know that something was happening before it? Right. Firstly, brother, let's not call them a government. Let's call them a regime. We're not talking about a government. We're talking about a regime. A regime that acts like tyrants, ladies and gentlemen. They have reduced the working class community to second class citizens in the UK. The regime talks about those working classes and villainizes them as alt-right. We can all play this sophist game, so let's stop referring to them as a government and let's start talking about them as a regime. And let's stop talking about them as the Prime Minister or Home Secretary and let's call them a tyrant instead, ladies and gentlemen. You want to call us alt-right racists, we'll call you a regime. You stop villainizing us and we'll stop calling you names as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, ladies and gentlemen, the British government has offered 160 million to protect Muslim schools and Muslim mosques, ladies and gentlemen. And they did that before current events occurred. No, ladies and gentlemen, why did they do that? They did it because they are postulating a narrative that there is an equal problem in our society between radical Muslims and the radical alt-right. And so this policy is a demonstration of how they see the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it goes without saying Muslim communities are worthy of protection. The same protection that everyone else should receive. So why did they get special treatment? Why? Ladies and gentlemen, are we not spending money 
protecting the ex-Muslims in this country who are being driven from their homes in this country, who are fleeing violence in this country. Who gives a damn, the Muslim apologist says. He's let his mask slip. There you go. Who gives a damn about ex-Muslims fleeing violence? There you go. He exposed himself, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we not? Why are we not protecting Christian churches in Muslim areas from harassment that occurs on a regular basis, ladies and gentlemen? Why are we not defending Jewish communities from pro-Palestinian, Islamist-supporting rioters and marchers in the UK, ladies and gentlemen? Let's be clear, the United Kingdom doesn't have an alt-right problem, it has an Islamist problem. Over 40,000 people on MI5's watch list are Islamists. And this brother laughs again, exposing himself. Over 90% of those being watched by the security services are Islamists, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have an, an alt-right problem. We have an Islamist problem. And we have a problem with our elite, ladies and gentlemen. We have an elite problem in the United Kingdom. That's the problem. These protests that we see right now are the cobweb. They are not the cause. And as anyone who owns a house knows, until you deal with a spider, you never get rid of the cobwebs. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Have you ever handled a soul spider? Let someone else ask a question. Any other questions? Going once. Spider, sir, you're talking about spider. Have you ever handled a spider? Going what? You're scared of a spider. You need to pay more attention. I literally just answered that question. I literally just answered that question, bro. Sir, we need less Hitlers in this world. You need to come closer if you can't hear me. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? We need less apologists like him in this world. There we go. Any other questions? Going once. You're fascist. I know you read Mussolini and Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. So Going twice. Do you, do you think your religion, my friend. You're supremacist. Yeah, you don't have no scripts. Right. It's, not, it's, not it's all fake. That's not a real So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, do we need more Christians in politics? And the answer is, it doesn't matter how many Christians we have in politics, if those Christians are not actually guided by a Christian worldview. Yes. We've had multiple Christians in politics for decades. What's your birth rate? The last six What's prime the ministers of, of the UK were all professing Christians. Theresa May, Tony Blair, David Cameron. It's point having Christians, brother, you're not helping. If you want to help, stand with your back in front of him and don't engage. That's how you'll help me right now. Ladies and gentlemen, unless we have Christians guided by the Christian worldview, it does not matter how many Christians we elect. And too many Christians follow a liberal agenda, not a Christian agenda. And so, before we ask the question, how can we get more Christians into politics, we need to ask a much more important question, which is, what kind of Christian country are we working for? Are we working for a Christian country at all? And if anyone who is in politics and calls themselves a Christian says honestly that they are not working for a Christian country, 
then they are a pointless politician as far as the church is concerned. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Answer that question. What's the Caucasian birth rate in North America and Europe? Answer that question. Any other questions? What's the birth Go on, bro. That's why you're bloody shit in your pants. We've all been going on in London and then poor kids die. Sorry? Sorry? We've all been going on in London with the riots and everywhere across England. Them little kids dying because of that attack. What I don't understand is why Sadiq Khan, the Muslim mayor of London, hasn't come out, give his condolences, or made one like appearance or anything on Twitter or anything. Why is that? Because he's too scared to upset the Muslim community. Right, ladies and gentlemen. The claim is that Sadiq Khan has not expressed his public condolence to the victims of Southport. I do not know if that is true or not. He may very well have, ladies and gentlemen. However, if underlined, italicized, emboldened, if he has not given his public condolences, then serious questions need to be asked of Sadiq Khan. Yes. Because if those children were Muslim, I am 100% confident that he would have been amongst the first people to speak. However, again, I don't know if the assumptions of the question are true, and so my answer is conditional. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other questions going once? Cool. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm no longer going to project my voice. If you want to listen to me but you can't hear me, you're going to have to move closer. So I'm not going to project my voice. If you want to hear me, move closer. So the question is, why do we have a radical Islam problem in this country? And the answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, and it isn't the case that it's bigger in England than it's bigger in a Muslim country because it depends which Muslim country you look at. There's a massive Muslim radicalization problem in Pakistan. It's much bigger than in the UK. But the reality is the UK is a net exporter of Islamic terrorism. That is again in a, a condemnation of our liberal elites who have allowed the UK to be a net exporter of Islamic radicalization. But why does it exist in the first place? It exists primarily because there are groups pushing a revivalist Islam, like the Salafists, like the Muslim Brotherhood, like Tablidi al Jamaat, and I probably mispronounced the name, like Hizbut Tahrir whom the government has allowed to continue to operate in our countries without opposition and without crackdown. And these Islamist movements have tapped into what Islam was at its birth. An imperialist, colonialist, supremacist ideology that believes in the subjugation of the whole world to Sharia law by any means necessary, including violent jihad. And why, ladies and gentlemen, have our elites allowed this pus, this rot to develop in our society? Why have they not crushed the Muslim Brotherhood? Why have they not crushed Tablidi al Jamaat? Why have they not crushed? His Buttaria. Why have they not crushed the radical Salafist mosques? Why? Because in the liberal world view, all religions are secondary matters. Any problem in society cannot be interpreted through the prism of religion. And wherever these two things intersect, a problem in religion, the Liberals default to the idea 
that any religion can be as bad as the next, that any ideology can be as bad as the next, and that because Islam in this country is mainly Asian subcontinent in ethnicity, our liberal elites confuse, ladies and gentlemen, ethnicity and religion. And that is why the Labour government is committed to outlawing Islamophobia, listen to the next bit, as a form of racism. Guys, don't pay him attention, he's feeding on your attention. Please don't engage, brother. You're feeding him attention. Just ignore him. Just ignore him, guys. You're feeding him attention. Just ignore him, please. He will go away if you ignore him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the solution to the problem is not to double down on liberal secularism. The solution to the problem is that we all strive for a Christian United Kingdom. That is where we must put our energies politically, economically, socially and culturally. Put your hand up if you agree with what I've just said. Keep your hand up and I want you to note how this cause unites people from every ethnicity, every colour, every culture, every language, both migrants and natives. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why this cause has to be a cause for Christendom and not a cause for natives against immigrants. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, let's not refer to this government as a government. Let us refer to them as a regime because they have reduced working class communities to second class citizens in this country. That is what the tyrants have done, ladies and gentlemen. And so, what the people must do is destroy the Labour Party. What the people must do is destroy the trade union movement. What the people must do is destroy the Conservative Party. And how must we destroy them? by using the fullness of our rights to organize, to politicize our communities, extra, supra, state, outside of the state, outside of the state, but in a democratic way, so that we begin to take over our local communities and our local politicized constituencies so that they begin to reflect our concerns. And again, I say to the church and to the reform party, this is your moment. Right now, lift up your eyes from your church programs and see that the opportunity is now to stand with the working classes is now to give voice to their concerns. And if you will not, then we can find another because churches can organize without those churches that will not support them. And if the Reform Party will not stand with the people, then we can find a party that will. And so it is not about what the government does, but about what all of you can do. Ladies and gentlemen, stop looking to the regime. The regime has shown you that it wants to treat you and will treat you as second class citizens. So organize yourselves to replace the regime 
through the democratic process and through the democratic methods in a war that we fight democratically. Go on. Okay, I'm a visitor here. So I've won I've always wondered this, that in America, there's a huge difference between a Republican politician and a Democrat politician. But when they come here, I am only here for summers, but I see no difference between conservative politicians and labor politicians. Okay, what's your question, bro? Right. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, why is there no observable difference between the Conservative Party and the Labour Party? It's because the Labour Party and the Conservative Party are both fully committed to the same internationalist liberal agenda. They are both fully committed to the idea that what we want is a world market in which all culture and values are subject to the needs of the economy and your only value is as a GDB point to that economy and that you're just there to buy and to consume and you are there to serve the elites and they distract you with bread and circuses and the reason why the Labour Party and the Conservative Party sound and do exactly the same things is because the only difference between them is how they manage the implementation of the same ideology. They have no real ideological difference. And that is why we need ideological education in our communities to recognize that this is a battle between creating a Catholic world, but Catholic in the sense of a Christian, multi-ethnic society that values local custom and tradition versus a liberal internationalist agenda in which they dilute local culture and custom and tradition and identity to turn you into consumers for an international market that they themselves control, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to be clear that to anyone who wants to use my words to spread some conspiratorial crap about it's the Jews, me and you are not on the same side. When I talk about the international elites, I am not talking about the Jews. There is no international elite of Jews. They are all liberal progressives. And yes, some Jews are liberal progressives, but then again, so are some black people, and so are some Christians, and so are some Muslims. These, so do not find succor in any of my words for this conspiratorial nonsense that the Jews are in control. And if you are spreading that crap, I want you to know we are on opposite sides. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, why am I talking about this, this struggle as one between, between an, a liberal internationalism in a Christian Catholicism. Because Catholic means universal. Universal means that it is open to all ethnicities. Ladies and gentlemen, and I am advocating for a new Christendom, which is open to people of all ethnicities and cultures. But alongside that, I, am, I support the idea of an ecumenical movement in the church, a new ecumenism like we've seen in Northern Ireland, where Protestants and Catholics have put aside their historical differences and have stood together shoulder to shoulder, Irish flag and Ulster flag, 
flying in the same march, in the same cause. We as Christians must put aside our differences because the battle against liberal internationalism and the battle against Islamization is far bigger and far more important than your squabbles between Protestants, Catholics and Orthodox. When we dealt with the bigger problems, then let's return to these discussion points. Go on, sir. Why don't you wipe out all religion, just, just, just disregard all religions and just work on a neutral base where no one has their God higher than anyone else's God. Right. Nice neutral base. I'm from New Zealand, mainly an atheist country. No problems like we've got here. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be clear. The liberal progressives tell us they try to dupe us that a secular, non-religious state is a neutral state. But, ladies and gentlemen, the god of liberal secularism is the idol of humanity and the god of the self. The United Kingdom, France and the USA are all following the ideology proposed by this gentleman here. And that ideology has given rise to the abuse of women through transgenderism. It has given rise to Islamization in France and America and the UK because that ideology cannot and will not deal with the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this idea that we don't favour one religion over another is a myth because the human heart desires a God. And those societies built on liberal secularism do have a God. It is called the liberal nation state, ladies and gentlemen. And the idea that there are no problems in New Zealand is not true. The rot of Islamization has already started in New Zealand, but it hasn't progressed enough for the liberal progressives to notice. But if they don't believe me, they can look at France, they can look at the UK, they can look at the USA, they can look at secular Turkey, they can look at, they can look at the birth of secular Pakistan, secular Egypt, that all started implementing what this man suggests and resulted in, ladies and gentlemen, the problems we are seeing in our society today. In other words, this brother is saying, let's double down on failure. I'm saying, let's hack our way back to a path that once worked. Christendom, ladies and gentlemen. Any other questions? Yeah. on the Islamization in France. <clears throat> What do you think should be? What do you think should be done? And what do you think of the Islamization in France happening now? Ladies and gentlemen, if anyone wants to know how bad things can get, they only need to look at what is happening in France at the moment. In France, they have uncontrolled Islamization, where women have disappeared from certain suburbs in and around Paris, where armed groups have literally walked through the streets carrying weapons, Kalashnikovs, where churches are regularly attacked in their thousands, ladies and gentlemen. What must happen in France is that the first daughter of the church returns to her first love and commits herself once again to a Christendom in France, to a Christian France. And make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is growing in France. Baptisms are up, and many Muslims are becoming Christians in France as well, because many Muslims don't want to live under Sharia law also. But, Ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to say directly to the people of France, the principles of the Republic are exactly the, are, are exactly the things that got you into the mess you're in. Doubling down on failure is not the solution. The cry across Europe must be to establish a new Christendom in Europe, where Christians in France make common cause with Christians in England, who make common cause with Christians in Germany, who make common cause with Christians in Nigeria, who make common cause with Christians in Ethiopia, who make common cause with Christians in Cyprus, who make common cause with Christians in Pakistan, who make common cause with Christians in India, who make common cause with Christians in Burma, who make common cause with Christians in the Philippines, who make common cause with the Christians of the Sudan, who make common cause with the Christians of Malaysia. We need a revival of the Catholicness of the body of Christ against the enemies of the church. Hey, the Muslims the enemy, are they? Ladies and gentlemen, are the Muslims the enemy? That's the question. I'm going to answer his question first. After, after he's, let me deal with his question and then I'll deal with yours. Brother, if you interrupt, I won't take a question from you. think the Muslims are just going to roll over and say, yeah, sure, create your Right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, notice, notice how simplistic the liberal thinks. Did you hear me say Muslims are the enemy? No, I didn't say that, did I? But so dumb are the liberals, so lacking in cognizance and the ability to think in diverse categories that you talk about the problem of Islamization and the thick, sheepish liberal accuses you of saying that Muslims are the enemy. Let me be clear. Muslims are not the enemy, but Islamization is a real problem. No, it's not. It's and the ladies and gentlemen, it's the solution. ladies and gentlemen, oh, let's be clear. No, Guys, no, 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 don't bite. <laughs> don't bite. He's a troll. He's a Muslim troll. Don't bite. Yeah, but the whole point, you got He's going to feed on your energy, right? ignore him. Ladies and gentlemen, the the ladies and gentlemen, this is the liberal result. troll. He He's wants like to say to me, God. and this Muslim apologist God. wants look to say to me, that bombed churches are not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that anti-Christian pogroms are not a problem. The anti-Christian genocide is not a problem. The turning Christians into dimmies and second-class citizens are not a problem. And if I should dare say that these things are a problem, they accuse me of spreading hatred. No, you just well, I want to point the out to them you that your apathy allows hatred to spread. Your silence allows churches to be attacked. Your silence allows Christians to be killed. It is not that people like me are the problem. The problem is people like you. Why, brother? JC, did you invite him to come? No, to stand there. Stand there, stand there, stand there. Right, ladies and gentlemen, any other question? Any other questions, ladies? Yeah, go on, sir. It doesn't want to discuss me, does it? There are some cultural conservatives to probably, um, they will probably cast me as one of them. Um, that believes that the evil, which is evil Islam, you cannot destroy Islam unless you destroy the source. And to destroy the source, you must go back to the culture that came from. What's the question? So my question is, how to put it, do you agree with the view? Right. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. The question is, how, ladies and gentlemen, do you respond to Islam? 
so, ladies and gentlemen. Which gave us the new we, re we need to respond <laughs> as Christians, ladies and gentlemen. Which is why it's we need to off. unashamedly critique and expose Sharia law. Like we must, un without shame, you critique gave, gave good the Quran the and the Hadiths, ladies and gentlemen. Brother, he's an Islamist. He's not going to listen to you. You, know, you must assert your rights over the Islamist dog. You mustn't allow them to bully, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say Islam emerges from an Arab culture. And so we cannot commit ourselves to destroying a culture because Arab culture can be beautiful. Arab culture is beautiful, but it's beautiful when it is freed from Islam and the Quran. And so what we must do is destroy the teachings of the Quran. Why? By how? By pointing people to the teachings of Jesus and showing the superiority of Christ over the Quran, of Christ over Muhammad. We must build and point to the idea that a Christian civilization is better than an Islamic civilization. Would you like to debate, sir? Would you like to debate? Would you like to debate? Right, I'm going to take another question. I'm going to debate you.